Hello and a warm welcome to Nationwide on the NTA. I am Ifoma Ojinta. Gabonese President Ali Bongo is reportedly under house arrest. This is coming as reactions continue to trail the purported takeover of governance in the country by some soldiers who appeared on national television to cancel recent election results. Uche Ugochuku has the details. Gabon, a country of about 2.4 million population, has witnessed democratic rule since independence from France in 1960 until a purported coup after President Ali Bongo won an election for a third time of another seven years, having been in power since 2009. The country has amended its constitution severally, extending the term from five years to seven years. Though the country witnessed a number of developments during Ali Bongo's rule, the military officers said they were representing all the security and defense forces of the country, halting the election results. The soldiers said the election results that gave the incumbent Bongo a victory were annulled, while all borders were closed and state institutions dissolved until further notice. Reunited within the Committee for Transition and Restoration of the Institutions on behalf of Gabonese people and as a guarantor of the protection of institutions, we have decided to defend the peace by ending the regime in place. Gabon has been ruled by the same family for more than 55 years out of its 63 years of independence. In the meantime, the European Union has reacted to the coup in Gabon, saying it would increase regional instability. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, said the EU's defense ministers would discuss the situation in Gabon. Paris said it was following events in Gabon with the greatest attention. China called for all sides in Gabon to guarantee the safety of President Ali Bongo, proceed from the basic interests of the country and the people, resolve differences through dialogue. Africa has experienced four coups in one year, with Burkina Faso contributing two of the military takeover in eight months interval. Niger won and now Gabon. Uche Ugochuku. NTA News. Meanwhile, in a video message, the ousted leader calls on his friends all over the world to make noise and reject the military takeover. Ali Bango has been under house arrest after military takeover on Wednesday, shortly after he was declared winner of the just concluded election. Ali Bongo, on Jimba, president of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise. For the people here have arrested me and my family. My son is somewhere, my wife is in another place and I'm at the residence. Right now, I'm at the residence and nothing happening, nothing is happening. I don't know what, what's going on. So I'm calling you to make the noise to make noise, to make noise, really. I'm, I'm thanking you. In the meantime, the presidency says, President Tinobu is working closely with other heads of states in the African Union towards a comprehensive consensus on the next steps forward. And to other news now, the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on National Housing Fund has advised the Auditor General of the Federation to thoroughly scrutinize the financial status of the National Housing Fund and report back to, its, to it. The committee has been investigating allegations of non-remittance to the fund and its utilization between 2011 and 2023. Ignatius Unquo reports. The day's interrogation commenced with the committee requesting complete figures of deductions into the National Housing Fund from the Department of the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System, IPPIS. After deduction, and we remit and uh, we are to pay salaries, there are instances where the cash backing may not cover the entire salary wage bill for a particular month. And in that instance, we, might, we, we, we are advised or we are directed to pay only the net 
we want to have a list of the one you cover. We also want to have the list of the one you are not covering and why you are not covering them. The committee was not satisfied with the submissions resulting in fight the gateways to the payment platforms, including the Central Bank of Nigeria. 7,016 staff in six MBAs that have attained 60 years of age still existed. I want you to please specifically focus on this in the next 48 hours and give us this report. That's all we're asking for. You furnish the committee with your audit on NHF in the next 48 hours, okay? It also resolved to invite the Accountant General of the Federation to appear before the committee in person, Ignatius Nkwo. The World Bank is keen on supporting Nigeria in achieving its economic goals. To this end, the bank has indicated interest in providing technical expertise and policy advice to Nigeria in critical areas such as budget implementation to enhance public financial management. World Bank country director to Nigeria gave the clue when he led a team from his office on a visit to the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning. Neka Oko reports. As a multilateral credit institution, the engagement between the World Bank and the Ministry before now was minimal, being mainly in terms of technical support, as well as loans and grants from donors, especially the European Union. But with the expansion of the Ministry's role, more support seems imperative to enable the Ministry achieve its mandate. Specifically today, what we discussed with the Honourable Minister is actually a lot of it was the support beyond financing and what we could do with ideas and experiences from other countries in his critical role as Minister of Budget and Economic Planning. The budget function, how to ensure that the scarce public funds are spent as effectively and efficiently as possible for the benefit of the Nigerian people. Grateful to the World Bank for its long-standing support, the minister expressed optimism about the prospect of Nigeria's economic growth in the near future. We have been uh, directed by the uh, president, President Asua Jubola Ahmed Tinibu, to do more, be more imaginative, uh, so that we can respond to the challenges in order to generate support for the policies and even for more that will come. The World Bank team's visit to the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning is the first since his assumption of office. In Abuja, Nekauku, NTA News. Oyo State's government is keen on alleviating the present economic situation since the removal of fuel subsidy. It has flagged off the distribution of food items and some days ago initiated pace setter transport service to enable people travel from one town to another at minimal costs. Ayomiku Ajibola has details. With federal government announcing short-term palliative plans to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal on citizens and businesses, state government, including Oyo State, have also followed suit. Oyo State government, through pay sector transport service via Sustainable Action for Economic Recovery, SAFA initiative, kicked off expansion and operation of Omitoto Mass Transit across all geopolitical zones in the state. We are starting loading by 6.30 to 7. So we are taking off by 8 a.m. I used to travel to Bumbo Shop. Let me see, almost daily. I work there. So uh, it's like I'm almost spending like 7,000 on transport. And right now, if I should calculate my transport, it will be like uh, 3,000. They are taking this bus to Shaki 3,5 before, and now it's 1,5. The initiative is expected to reduce the financial burden on your state residents occasioned by petrol subsidy removal. In Ibadan, Ayomiku Ajibola. NTA News. And Ayomiku is standing by at one of the bus terminals in Ibadan. For residents' reaction to this development, Ayomiku, please give us an update. Yeah, thank you very much, Ifuma. Uh, with the announcement of petrol subsidy removal by the federal government, various state government, including the federal government itself, have come up with various palliative measures to cushion the effect of this subsidy removal here in Ibadan, the other state capital. One of the one of the uh, policies being put in place is the um, is the Omitutuma Transit uh, 
boards being put in place by the state government. Um, this, the beauty of this initiative is that these buses are not just plying within the metropolis, but they are also they are also plying. They have also been expanded to other parts of the geopolitical zones. And I have with me here a public affairs analyst who will be talking to us more on this uh, on this uh, bus transit. Sir, can you please tell us your name, sir? My name is Abiola Ali. I'm a finance expert and uh, social analyst. All right, quickly, sir. What is your take on this initiative, and how does it how does it uh, take the burden away, financial burden of the people? Well, I, I must commend uh, both the federal government and the, and the state government and your state government because uh, removal of press subsidy has been having a negative effect on our people because most of the people are not too, I mean, they are not finding it easy in our state here. And so what the government has done, apart from other initiatives, there are other initiatives that the government, government has put in place. Uh, package that SEVA. Uh, SEVA is an acronym of Sustainable Action for Economic Recovery. And uh, I mean, we have some in form of uh, distribution of food items to people. We have some in form of uh, loans to farmers. We have some in form of loans to small and middle tail enterprises. And we also have in terms of uh, buying buses. As a date, Oyo State government has been able to purchase close to 50 buses. Essentially, what those buses are going to be doing is to be plying uh, roads within Oyo State, not just about the metropolis. I mean, there's a link between. I mean, they, they, they provided links between Ibadan and some other other parts of the state. We have 40 zones in Ibadan, and so all these buses are going to be plying those roads at a very cheap price. So that uh, populace, our, our people, you know, will not have to suffer to be able to board uh, all these mass transit buses. All right, thank you very much. I also have a student here with me who will be sharing her experience. Well, um, how much do, I saw you coming out from the bus, one of the buses a couple of hours ago. How much does it cost you from an, to, from your destination to this place? Okay, um, back then we do board was 1,500 naira from here to Ogbomosho, but now it is 700 naira. Thanks to the government for this opportunity, it has actually reduced the cost of transport. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, if uh, it will be it will interesting to know that uh, a couple of hours ago, the state governor, Sheyema Kinde, distributed food items to people of uh, Oyo State. He actually started the distribution of food items to people of uh, Oyo State. Simultaneously, his deputy governor was doing the same thing at Shaki Axis of the state as well. The SSD took charge of, the, of, that, of that of uh, Ishei, while the chief of staff and the deputy and the speaker of the state house assembly was doing the one, well, took charge of that, the one of uh, Eru. Very much um, indeed, Ayomiku. Um, very commendable initiative by the Oyo State Government in uh, palliative distribution. Thank you so much. That will be all for now. Now, the Nigerian Television Authority's drive to continuously upgrade its content and service delivery for viewer satisfaction has received a boost. This was at an interactive forum with content, content producers and marketers who is pressed willingness to leverage on the wide reach and impactful products of the authority to reposition it as the number one media house in Nigeria. Joseph Watson reports. Few clips of NTA's current programs on board for its partners to catch a glimpse. It is a forum for them to give feedback and expectation on how to improve content production and market the national media house. The first of its kind in the city of Abuja. Our Twitter followers uh, with the 1.6 uh, is uh, a leap from just a mere 3,000, 300,000 followers uh, before we came in. So, you can see we have been able to provide a fertile platform for you to advertise. For those who have kept tabs with NTA's programs recently, it was an acknowledgement that a lot of reforms have taken place, particularly online. But they want to see the same impact at the local stations. Like some of the clips that I saw here, well, from our members, 
I was happy to see that it could pass for the same kind of program that you find on any other um, trending TV channel in Nigeria. It doesn't mean changing what NTA is at its core. It can mean spinning off something different that can serve the new set of audiences. The key problems, I must have to admit, is the issue of power supply. We have had a pilot test of how we can generate power through solar to transmit 24-7. The headquarters completely will have migrated from the SD to HD stroke 4K. There is a general consensus here that NTA needs to market itself more to keep the viewer abreast. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. The Adamawa state government has taken delivery of 10 luxurious buses as part of measures to ease the transportation difficulties of the people because of fuel subsidy removal. Rianubala reports. The eight-seater luxurious buses procured by the Adamawa state government is not only to enhance the transportation system in the state, but to serve as a palliative measure to cushion the effect of the foil subsidy removal. The acting governor of the state, Kaletapo George Farauta, who took delivery of the 10 luxurious buses, promised proper utilization of the vehicles out to its movement of people across the state. They'll be used to reduce the hardship our people are going through and the need to help our people get a cushioning effect. The managing director sells in some vehicle manufacturing company, Urban Osegwe, while handing over the vehicle said, maintenance team are already on ground for necessary repairs. The servicing parts of these vehicles are readily available. It's not something you need to look over your shoulder to look for. They are readily available in the open market. In Eola, Rayan Ubala, and... Thank you very much, Rayan And we now link up, link up with our correspondent, Yusuf Jika in Adamawa to you know, tell us more on measures taken by the state government towards uh, fuel subsidy, to cushion the effects of fuel subsidy removal. And um, Yusuf, we know that uh, removal of fuel subsidy has you no know, doubt or you know, came with some harsh realities that is now prompting government at all levels to wade into the situation. And now Adamawa is among the frontline states that are ruling out palliatives. What can you say uh, are some of the current measures taken that are impacting, you know, the life of citizens? Very much. Adamawa State, as you know, is, uh, is not an exception from uh, other states of the country as a number of measures uh, adopted by the state to cushion the effect of the subsidy uh, removal. One of uh, such is the procurement of these uh, innocent vehicle motors, 10 brand new ones. Uh, 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 these vehicles have been uh, procured by the Adamawa State government to ease the transportation sector by which the people of the state are suffering as a result of the removal of such uh, uh, hardship. Um, uh, Aside from that, uh, the people here in the state, uh, uh, more of what they are saying is, uh, is more of commendation uh, on the state government saying that uh, the provision of uh, these vehicles will in no small way uh, cushion the effect of the transportation uh, aspect by which they have been suffering for quite a long time since the removal of this uh, subsidy. As we all know, Innocent Vehicle Motors is one uh, of the Nigerian-based uh, manufacturing companies. The state government deemed it necessary to procure these uh, buses from them. Each of these buses has, uh, at least will accommodate 100 passengers uh, with 58 uh, seats and also uh, 48, uh, 42 people uh, will be standing on, in a row. Uh, with me joining me here uh, to say more on these measures being taken place by the Adamawa State Government is the Commissioner of uh, Reconstruction, Rehabilitation, Reintegration and Humanitarian Services Barista uh, Bello Hamandram, who also doubled as the uh, publicity secretary of the committee of uh, the coordination and distribution of uh, palliative uh, set up by the state government. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, can you tell us more on the measures adopted by the state government in cautioning the effects of the removal of fuel subsidy? Yeah, in Adamawa State, we have divided the measures into two. There is one uh, supported by the federal government. 
uh, that is uh, for the 2 billion naira given by federal government instead of uh, the 5 billion naira as mentioned uh, earlier. So the state government procured uh, these uh, 10 innocent vehicles and then uh, there are, they also procured fertilizer and then but we have procurement of rice. We have 1,500 metric tons of fertilizers, 1,500 metric tons of uh, uh, rice. And then subsequently the state government launched her own that is 10 on palliative. Uh, a committee of five commissioners who are set up to, to do the job of which I am heading, of which I am heading. Uh, so we have, uh, today we will finally submit the, the, the report to the, to the state government for, for action. All right, when are we expected to see this vehicle operation? Yeah, you see, they delivered the vehicles yesterday. So already a committee has been established in order to develop modalities for the usage of the vehicles. But certainly the vehicles will be used at a subsidized rate. And you know it's a, a diesel uh, stroke CNG and then it is a 100 uh, parcels capacity, 56 seating and 44 standing. So any moment from now the vehicles will hit the ground. There are emergency measures. Or how much? Did you cost the government? Uh, well, the government spent one billion sixty million naira. So the cost of each is one hundred and six million, one hundred million, uh, one hundred and six million naira. Thank you. So much. by the time you multiply one hundred and six million by ten, you get one billion six hundred sixty million naira. Thank you very much, Honourable Commissioner. Uh, over to you in the studios. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Now, a youth group of the All Progressives Congress has pledged to support President Tinubu's administration in view of its laudable policies and programs aimed at positively transforming youths for the better. This is coming as lobby heightens for who becomes Minister of Youth Development, where the group expresses confidence in the President's ability to make a popular choice. I believe if Dr. Nicholas Felix is being appointed as the Minister of Youth. We have the strong belief that he will no doubt and has the potential in our youth and convert it into national assets for the overall benefit of all national prosperity. The group says only those who made sacrifices during and after the elections should be recognized for service. The group appealed to the party to consider their request and support youth-oriented policies through consultations and participation in processes of governance. Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, has been identified as one of the high-risk zones for severe flooding in the coming weeks, as the Lado Dam initiates a controlled discharge of water. Concerns are mounting regarding the potential devastation this could bring to the area. In light of the situation, Jonathan Omajali has an update on how residents are preparing to avert another disaster. Fatima Salisu, a Lokuja resident, finds herself in a state of uncertainty. Her anxiety palpable as she readies herself for what lies ahead. Last year, she and her household fell victim to the flooding in the state. With recent warnings of another flood and the gradual release of water from the Lago Dam, she must prepare to evacuate her home and seek temporary refuge. I am washing my, all my clothes. I want to live here because flood is coming. It's every year that we, we used to park and leave this place. So my own talk that I want to talk now is that, is that they should help us to stop the flood. Climate change and its consequences are battles the state must grapple with at least for the time being. Experts have recommended that individuals like Fatima, who reside along waterways, should consider permanent relocations to mitigate flood-related crises. Evacuate areas that are liable to flood permanently, okay, so that uh, when water is coming, you can have your peace. As per the Center for Flood Monitoring Management and the Federal University, Lokoja, there has been a gradual increase in the water level reaching approximately 8.54 meters as of August 29. Action is now in Lokoja, Jonathan Omajali, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on the NTA. We'll take a breakdown. 
More reports in a moment. Please stay. Allah gives power. He endowed people with knowledge and capacity to think for our people. We must not fail, and we will not fail. Your children will get more rewards than what you have. Because they have a future in this country now. Hope itself is life. Once you lose hope, you lose life. Once people get lifted to a certain level, they start feeling godlike. What would you attribute this backwardness in education to in the not to date? I feel alive. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. wrong. The program is in reflections. of contract, partnership, promotion, publication, manufacturing, STBS, start times, lectures, ICT and training, production and sales, TV expos, events, local and international roadshows, exhibition but local and international. We are at Area 11 Garikia Abuja, opposite Abuja Geographical Information System, ages visit our website www.ntatve.com.ng and our social media platforms Twitter at NTATV Enterprise Facebook NTATV Enterprise Instagram at NTATV Enterprise and these numbers on 70 <laughs> Now, still on the flood concerns in Lukoja, Jonathan is standing by at the 2012 flood estate Lukoja. Now, Jonathan, if you can hear me, can you tell us exactly the situation of things over there? Well, um, from the report, um, you will discover that um, it's not looking pretty fine. Uh, the water level, of course, is on the increase. And um, some of the people we spoke to this morning, uh, an expert that spoke with us, suggested that the solution is uh, moving the place from the, the flood center or permanently. Uh, because the issue of um, uh, moving when the flood comes in and then returning is not going to solve the problem. So right behind me, you will see um, a lot of houses. This is um, the Wada Estate. It was built in 2012 after the flood and um, the, the victims of that year's flood of course have settled down where I have one of them here uh, Mrs. Agu to just talk to us uh, Mrs. Agu talk to us how did you get here thank you very much I, I was affected by the flood in 2012 and immediately the government state government came to our rescue since then we have been here 
And to the glory of God, look at our road, it's too bad. This is the problem we are facing. If we want to go to just 200 units here, we will pay 300 naira for a bike. So we are facing uh, difficulty here because of the bad road. And we have an uh, IDP camp here. It, it's like it, they have, the government abandoned the, the IDP camp. We don't know, maybe because of the bad road, we don't know. Okay. So we want government to come to our rescue. Okay. We are permanent here, we don't just go and come back. Since 2012, during the government of Captain Wada, we have been here. Since the state government allocated this place to us, we thank God, we thank the state government. But all we need the state government to do for us now is this our road. Okay. We are begging the government to come to our all right. Um, thank you. You you heard her. She said them um, since 2012, they've been here. Um, that challenge of um, being affected by the flood, of course, is over. But the question is for those who are going to be affected um, uh, this year, should there be flood, um, how are they going to find a permanent place? Just like uh, Mrs. Agu, I have uh, with me here the Commissioner for Environment, um, Mr. Omofaye, Victor Omofaye. Victor, talk to us. Uh, what is the government doing to provide uh, permanent solutions uh, for more victims like um, Agu? Yes, uh, as you know and as you are aware that uh, this, we are right inside the flood estate. And inside the estate, you have a, a flood hostel. And uh, we, the place is, uh, we are in a good look now, where we hope that uh, uh, we have where we have prepared for the people that will be affected this year, you know, to move to. But uh, by by and large, uh, it's something. It's not something the state government alone can cater for, and that's where we are calling on the federal government to to come to our aid, so that uh, we can uh, provide more uh, 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 more comfortable accommodation to the victims. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Victor. So, like you said, of course. Um, uh, they are not um, they are not resting and of course they need the federal government and other good spirited um, individuals and organizations to come to their aid uh, so that there can be more uh, permanent um, estates like this uh, so that the, the victims will just have to move out um, when the flood sets in and then go back again it's not going to help uh, help the individuals and the states of course uh, that is the situation for now uh, we're watching and see how things unfold Thank you very much, um, Jonathan. It's good to know that you are now resting in providing soccer to the victims. Thank you once again, Jonathan. It's now time to join Agatha in Benin for more updates on Nationwide. Administration's renewed hope agenda on women and youth empowerment as well as food security the African Union Development Agency and New Partnership for Africa's Development are training 100 Edo women and youths on latest technology in poultry production and management at Ososo, Akuku Edo local government area of Edo State. Bukola Urubusi has details. The organizers of the three-day workshop on poultry production, management, processing and marketing for women and youths say the program is in line with President Bola Ahmed Tunubu's renewed hope agenda to equip young women and youths on modern poultry farming techniques in order to increase the value chain in poultry business. Driving development through agriculture-led policies and programs. A facilitator of the program, Dr. Yaya Olotun, identified quality feeding, good vacancies, as well as good hygiene for effective management of poultry farming, adding that there are enormous prospects in poultry farming. Bread can produce very well between, I think, 12 to 15 months. After 15 months, you can decide to sell it. Some participants put the training in perspective. I really commend the federal government for this wonderful uh, program. It's a way of uh, assisting people. It's really broadening my heart, even enlightening me more to know more about how to take care of poultry. Status Park are expected to be given to the participants 
to set up their businesses. In Benin, Bukola Urubusi, NTA News. As equipped and as part of efforts to improve learning and teaching of science subjects in schools, the federal government has equipped science laboratories in some schools in Ondo State. Abiodun Oladepo reports. Equipping Science Laboratory at Akono Grammar School in the Northern Centurial District of Ondo State is part of steps taken by the federal government to making science subjects more attractive to students. It is to boost their science and technology skills from the early stage of life and enhance local productions in no distance time. We install equipment for water supply, wastewater, gas supply. So for students who wants to, and it involves an electric, I mean, electrical department. Both the institutes and national agency for science and engineering and infrastructures charge schools to develop proper maintenance culture. The community noted that such gesture will enhance learning of sciences in schools. Science students of the school appreciate federal government's gesture. And why we have this opportunity to but I thank our center for starting this in our school this year. And with this equipment no doubt, performance of science students from public schools in Nakoko be more robust in both local and external examinations. From Akono Akoko in the Northern Senatorial District of Ondo State, Abiodun Oladepo, NTA News. That ends our package on Nationwide. If I'm wise, back to you for more reports. Thank you very much, Agatha. A coalition of civil society organizations under the auspices of Center for Credible Leadership and Citizens Awareness have passed a vote of confidence on the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabiamila, urging him not to be d deterred. This followed a recent social media criticism against the Chief of Staff to the President. The group described the media report as unfounded, baseless and malicious, alleging that such act is tantamount to causing distractions to the President. The, to the present administration alleging that some aggrieved politicians have resorted to the use of social media to malign the chief of staff. We hereby unequivocally pass a vote of confidence on the chief of staff to Mr. President Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila. As a man with the requisite character, capacity, competence, and qualification for the office of the Chief of Staff to Mr. President. Also pointed to the antecedents of Femi Bajabiamila at the Ninth Assembly and in his present position to include his intervention that ended the eight months ASU strike, an active role he played in resolving the disagreements between federal government and labor unions. And Port Harcourt is our next stop on Nationwide Gabriel Isa Guide. New modality, sound technological base, infrastructure implementation that will bring about sustainable and durable world projects in the country is one of the focal points of the present administration. The Minister of Works, David Omahi, stated this while touring ongoing road projects in the southwest zone of the country. Larry Billy was on the Minister's entourage and now reports. The Minister of Works embarked on the on-the-spot assessment of the reconstruction of Apapa Oworoshoki or Jota Expressway, rehabilitation work on Eco Bridge, the Outer Marina Boni Camp Road, and the Eco Bridge through Akwangbo with access ramps. Other strategic road projects assessed were the construction of the Deep Seaport Access Road through Ekwe Shagamubini Expressway, the 54.24 road from Lagos to Ogu State and the rehabilitation, reconstruction, and expansion works on the Lagos Ibadan Dua carriageway. 98% done. This uh, section one of uh, Lagos Ibadan Express Road, section one being done by Jalapeja. Section two is being done by uh, RCC. 
that one could be said to be 95 percent because the you know the carriageway express uh, is said to be up to 100 percent done at the shagamu epe axis the minister was accompanied by the former governor and now senator in Ogun state binga daniel who expressed confidence and support for the rehabilitation work uh, it has become a security risk for our people. Motorists uh, in the process of running to portals, lose their tires, get the vehicle uh, tumbling, and sometimes robbers throw with spanners on the way. Um, you can rest assured that uh, we are going to stand behind you. It is going to be a week-long walking tour going through all the road projects in the zone. The Minister of Works for the next one week we are certain if the road projects in the southwest meet the global best standards. In Lagos, Larry Bileyi, NTA News. That's it from here. It's now back to Ifoma in Abuja. Many thanks, Hingino. Okay. Okay, moving on, the Nigeria Police Force Public Relations School in collaboration with the National Institute for Social Media Analysts are building the capacity of social media handlers of security and government at all levels on effective governance. Francis Form reports that the training is to ensure balanced reportage of activities for national security. <laughs> Seated in this hall are social media handlers of different government agencies and corporate organizations receiving training on how to better engage citizens on social media. Every kind of uh, a fora like this, you know, is a, an opportunity to learn more and then new things. So we hope that uh, we will get better in the use of social media after this training. To see how to do more in times of you know, engaging more with citizens, especially residents of FCT, in the area of response to fire incidences and other emergencies. The social media has become a major tool in engaging government at all levels and greater majority of the public, especially the younger generation. Citizens are also reminded of the laws in place presently to checkmate instances of cyberbullying or stalking, as well as other related offenses. As you will learn, social media plays in e-governance creates opportunities for interagency collaboration, meeting each other, tribal, whatever crisis, and other us online. So if government having this effective online interaction with its citizens, knowing fully aware that digital weapon is an only an effective means of governance. The social media handlers are advised to be patient in verifying postings within the established standard of practice as they engage with users of the platform on a day-to-day -day interaction. Franks is from NTA News. President Bola Tinubu has continued discussion with leaders within Africa and around the world towards checking what has been described as a contagious autocracy in Africa. Following the latest coup in Gabon, President Tinubu had a telephone conversation with the Canadian Prime Minister on possible next step. Two heads of state uh, mutually agreed that the promotion and protection of constitutional democratic governance on the continent remains a paramount priority and that the people of Africa living in the diaspora around the world making a huge impact to the socio-political landscapes of countries around the world and the uh, economies of countries around the world uh, continue to urge on the global community uh, to uh, advance uh, the cause uh, of democracy on the continent for the sake of the economic prosperity uh, of all Africans. So it is of frontline importance uh, to understand that His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will continue to engage uh, with heads of state, not just within 
the African Union, uh, but also around the world. Uh, and those communications and engagements are ongoing. A world where terrorism, along with its severe impact on the society, is effectively combated can't be realized when the global community channels more energy towards fostering peace, promoting dialogue, and combating the forces of hatred and division. Nigeria's First Lady, Oluremi Tinubu, said this while performing a wreath laying ceremony to mark the 12th year remembrance held in memory of UN staff killed during a terrorist attack on US, UN House Abuja. Paying tribute, she says the world must draw strength from the sacrifice of those serving the cause of peace and recommit to the values of unity, understanding and cooperation that the UN represents. Let us work tirelessly to ensure that such act of violence never occur in our nation and the world at large. Today we stand united in our resolve and our determination to create a world where the principles of peace, justice and cooperation that the United Nations stands for are not merely ideals but realities for all. We now join Gabriel in Port Harcourt for more updates on Nationwide. Hello. Thank you, Farman. Welcome to Port Harcourt. The Joint Task Force South South Operation Delta Sea has apprehended a vessel and 10 suspects involved in transporting suspected illegal refined crude oil products. Ebenimi Zitimiola has status of this. The renewed efforts by the Joint Task Force Operation Delta Save to curb oil theft, illegal bunkery and other related crimes are yielding more results. The recent is the arrest of the vessel MV Oforma laden with suspected illegally refined AGO and 10 suspects at the Abloma Jetty River State on Sunday 27th August 2023 by troops of the Joint Task Force Operation Delta Safe Headquarters Yanagua after a recent arrest on 15th August by units of the maritime component NNS Pathfinder. As at the time it was intercepted, the troops from OPDS headquarters intercepted the boat here about 20,000 liters of the product has already been transferred from the dog in, dugout boat into the vessel here. And currently we have about three to 5,000 liters still remaining on board. Maritime Component Commander Operation Delta Safe says further investigations are ongoing and action will be taken in line with extant directives from the defense headquarters. All this is to show that Operation Delta Save, with all its components, are not relenting on their efforts at ensuring that crude oil theft and other forms of illegalities is eradicated. Officials of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority were on ground to collect samples of the product. While calling on intending perpetrators to desist from the act, the Joint Tax Force Operation Delta Save has, however, promised to uphold all sense of professionalism and the discharge of their constitutional duty in stamping out criminal elements and those that are causing economic sabotage to the country. Ebinimi Zitmiola, NTA News. As part of measures towards addressing the rising cases of maternal and infant mortality, River State Government has constituted an immunization tax force for a well coordinated immunization practice in the states. Osinachi Abraham has the details. The Deputy Governor of River State, Professor Ngozi Odo, while addressing members of the Task Force Committee on Immunization, says the immunization component of the primary health care is very crucial, and this formed the reason for the setup of the committee to ensure efficiency of their activities towards best immunization practice. This committee has a lot to do because we are focusing on the vaccine preventable diseases which has been a great burden on the state, not just our state, across the world, globally actually. So the children that need attention, the children that we need to save 
by ensuring that the immunization interventions get to them as at going to. Professor Ngozi Odo is thankful for where the immediate past administration has placed healthcare service. She seeks the support of the committee towards improving healthcare delivery for the betterment of the state. We can't do that without your support. We can't achieve that without commitment and dedication. So we therefore want to take this opportunity to say, please, uh, gear up more, do more, find out where there are gaps, and let's fill up the gaps, and let's be one of the states that will be a state of pride in the state with respect to this tax force and other aspects of intervention. She urged them to understand the huge demand on them to ensure that no child is denied access to immunization. In Port Harcourt, Osinachi Abraham, NTA News. And that's our contribution for here. It's now back to you from in Abuja. Many thanks. Now, have you ever paused for a moment and imagined that many people are lying sick and hopeless at home? Now, that is what, exactly why a non-governmental organization, Islamic Society of Egon Land, is reaching out to the less privileged who cannot afford what it takes to have a glimpse of their immediate environment as a result of blindness. Felicia Agu has more on the story. Story of a young man who is currently a PhD student against all odds due to childhood blindness because he was not able to access good medical care at the right time that led to his present predicament. Tales of many other persons with eye ailments at the verge of giving up came to limelight with renewed hope like a shining star in the east, courtesy of the benevolence of the organization. I'm not seen for the long, and I came here, I've been seen what the doctor do for me. I'm very grateful. This was made possible by the intervention of the Islamic Society of Egonlan, Ise Bone, out of her desire and charity to assist in the restoration of hope for people with eye defects. What we targeted was to give distribute 500 glasses. Not all have them, we still have some. But I, 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 I want to believe that not less than 300 persons have benefited from the reading glasses. The exercise were planned in three stages, screening, surgery, and mop-up. If any would win an award in the current economic realities of today's world, then those wearing the smiles of their faces following their successful surgeries will gladly give the award to the caregivers. In Lafia, Felicia Agu, NCA News. Thank you very much, Felicia, and I agree with you on that. And on that note, we conclude Nationwide for today. We thank you for being part of our production. Have a nice day.